What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Hope all you had a great day today. Getting into this episode of GH. <laughs> I'm going to be perfectly honest. I'm not surprised that Nicholas and Ava slept together. Well, they had COVID sex. I'm not even going to. I'm not surprised because at the end of the day, there's no way you're you're human. There's no way you're going to go all that time with no sex. Absolutely no way. There's no way in the world you're going to go all that time. You're going to be married to somebody and just go without sex. At, just not at all. There's no way. I had a feeling they were either going to have sex with somebody else eventually or they're just going to break down and have sex with each other because clearly the chemistry is there. Clearly, they both feel something for each other. And can't nobody tell me Nicholas don't have some type of feeling for Ava. Like, I'm not saying he's head over heels madly in love with the woman. You know, of course not. But there's definitely a sexual attraction between them. Definitely a lot of chemistry between them. There's no denying the chemistry. Because Maura West had chemistry with Tyler Christopher too. I'm going to be honest with you. Maura West has chemistry with a broom. She can have chemistry with a mop and make it sexy and make it look good. That's just how good Mar Mara West is. She's that good of an actress. Like she can literally have chemistry with anything, with a ketchup bottle and make it interesting. That's that's a testament to how good you are. You know what I mean? So I'm not even surprised. But can't nobody tell me that they're not feeling each other. Ava and Nicholas are definitely feeling each other. Do they want to stay married for real, for real? Probably not. Maybe not. But sex-wise, oh, they I knew they was going to end up hitting them sheets at some point. At some point, I knew it. You know, you're human at the end of the day. You have needs. You got to get down with the get down at some point, you know. And obviously, neither one want to cheat because they don't want to miss out on some money. But I knew one of them was or both of them was going to have to crack and sleep with each other at some point, And they did not disappoint because I knew it was going to happen. He came up to the cabin, though, hoping that he was going to bust her with Franco. But boy, was he in for a surprise because she was not there with Franco. Obviously, she was there with her daughter. Um, this whole marriage between them is just a mess. It is a hot freaking mess. Like, they really need to figure out what they're going to do. Because <laughs> this is getting ridiculous between them. Um, so, anyway... Moving on from that, um, we get to Monte Carlo. So Robert and Olivia are, are at a casino in Monte Carlo, and Robert basically was trying to tell Olivia to keep a low profile. Robert, why you say that to her? Because you know good and well Olivia is not going to keep no low profile. First of all, she's from Bensonhurst. She, she got a little ratchet in her. She ain't going to be no low profile. Um... So Olivia was basically making all these noises and stuff, trying to get the bartender's attention. Um, when the co-owner of the casino walked up to her, he took an interest. And guess who the co-owner of that casino is? None other than Mr. Rudge, Winston Rudge. And for those who don't remember who Rudge is, that's the big ugly dude. You know, he'd be making that little face, scrunching up his face and stuff. He worked for uh, Olivia Jerome. When she was Black Mel and Julian, her right hand man, her henchman, Rudge. Um, so he's the co-owner of the casino that Robert and Olivia are at. So Rudge felt like Robert was familiar to him. And Robert was afraid that Rudge at some point was going to remember who he was. Um, but Robert and Olivia had teamed up basically and convinced Winston otherwise that he didn't know who Robert was. And he probably just had one of those faces. Um, but he feels, though, Robert was just worried that he was going to figure it out at some point. So they had to move quickly. Um, but he also had to remind Olivia that she had no formal training as a spy. Because, you know, Olivia was in her zone. She was like, oh, I'm an acting spy today. She said, I'm a spy today. Like, she was just in her zone. Um, but trust me, even though Olivia, she doesn't have any formal training as an agent or anything like that, she's not a slouch. Like, she's from Bensonhurst, need I say more. 
So she definitely know how to take care of herself. She's not no delicate little flower. You know what I mean? Like, come on. She's been around Sunny. She's been around Julian. She's, you know, coming from the neighborhood that she came from. You got to be a little rough and tough. So she's definitely no pushover. So I believe she can kind of handle herself, you know, when it comes to certain things. But it's always good to have Robert as backup to help her out. Um. So anyway, Brooklyn continues to act like Brooklyn, acting like a brat. Um, she needs to grow up. I, I mean, I understand she's upset with her dad, but you would think getting your throat sliced and damn near losing your life would just open up your eyes to show you how important life is and how important the people around you are and that you would realize that instead of pushing people away, this is a time to mend fences and forgive because what if something happens to you next time again and next time you're not so lucky and you die. So then that means you'll leave this earth without, you know, saying what you really need to say to the person that you love. You don't want to have that. You know what I mean? Forgiveness is the key, you know, just forgive. It's like at the end of the day, Ned was willing to forgive her for her betrayal. So why can't she just forgive him for throwing her out the house and disowning her? Like the past is the past, even though it's the distant past. But still, it's like, let it go. Why continue to be a brat? Because when Portia came into the room, she wanted to tell Brooklyn about her test results. And, of course, Brooklyn was acting like a brat. She wanted Ned to leave. She didn't want him to be a part of it. She didn't want him to hear her results. She wanted him to go. So, when Portia told her the results and stuff, Brooklyn wanted to know if she was going to be able to sing again. And even though we didn't hear the answer to that, we didn't get a yes or a no on it, Brooklyn basically was acting pouty and, you know, feeling sorry for herself. So once Brooklyn started feeling sorry for herself, that's pretty much the answer that she probably won't sing again. Um, So, of course, Brooklyn continues to be a brat and she takes um, she takes um, Ned's phone and I knew exactly what she was going to do. Erase. um the message that Olivia left. I knew Brooklyn was going to do it. And that's exactly what she did. She erased the message. So that way Ned would never know that Olivia called. Messing up their marriage even further than it's already messed up. Causing all type of mess. Um, so Brooklyn, she just need to grow the hell up. Like you are grown. Grow up. And this is why Ned continues to treat her like a child. Because you act like a child. Grow the hell up. Like seriously. Put your big girl pants on and grow up. Um, so when Chase came in there or whatever, she told Chase that she was um, leaving the hospital and that she wasn't going to the quarter maze. So where the hell do you think you're going to live? Like, where are you going? Like, who are you going to go stay with? I mean, don't get me wrong. She could always check into a hotel. She could always go stay with Sonny and, you know, Carly and them, I guess. But it's like she needs to stop being so petty. Like, grow up. Stop being so petty. So, of course, Ned is pissed off. He's lashing out at everybody. Um, yesterday, he lashed out at Lucy. Today, he's lashing out at Portia. He's lashing out at Chase. He's mad at Chase because the PCPD still has not found Nell yet. And Chase is letting him know, like, stuff like this takes time. And nobody has seen Nell. There's been no sighting of her. They have, you know, all type of alerts out for Nell. And nothing has come of it yet. Obviously, we all know why. But, um... You know, he's just reassuring Nell that the cops are doing everything they can. But we all know even if Nell was out there, you know, the PCPD is basically trash. So I wouldn't put all my faith in them. Um, you know, that's like Mayberry RFD. You know, like it's just a shit show with that department. That department is just trash. Just mm -mm, nope. Um, but I can't blame Ned for being pissed though. You know, he thinks that, you know, he's trying to be in his daughter's best interest or whatever. But really... I think he is, but I also feel like he's just trying to get back in her good graces. I mean, at this point, I don't think nothing's going to work. He just needs to give her some time, some space. Let her try to get all that brattiness up out of her and see where it go. Um, so anyway, he started lashing out at Portia because Portia wouldn't tell him about the test results. And he was mad at her because she would not break doctor patient confidentiality. I'm like, Ned. Portia is doing her job. 
if Brooklyn did not want you to hear the test results, she can't go behind her back, break all type of HIPAA violations, and tell you what her results were. She can't do that. First of all, the hospital could be sued. She could be fired. She could lose her law license. I mean, not her law license, her um, medical license. Like, uh, she can't do all of that. You know what I mean? Like, I understand that is frustrated, but you need to stop taking your anger out on everybody because they didn't do anything to you. You know what I mean? Like, you just need to give Brooklyn some space. It is what it is. Calm his crazy ass down and give people some space. Um, so anyway, Sonny, Carly, and Michael are visiting Mike. They're sitting with Mike still. And they continue to have these flash forwards of what life would be like if Mike had more time. Um, this is like their 89th million flash forward of what life would be like if Mike could be around. I mean, it's nice or whatever, but I'm over it at this point. <laughs> I am. I'm over it. Like, we get it. He's dying. I feel bad, but moving along. Um, so Felix basically told Sonny that Mike is going to get um, some morphine to ease his discomfort. And the morphine is going to wake him up a little, basically. Which is good, I guess. Um, so anyway, in Geneva, where Dante is... Dr. Kirk basically was updating Dante about what's going on in um, Port Charles with Mike and stuff like that about how Mike is pretty much at the end of the road and, you know, Dante was basically singing Mike's praises. I feel bad for Dante that he can't be there to visit with Mike and sit with him one last time and say his goodbyes and stuff. I feel bad for him, but, you know, Dante got to do what he got to do for himself and his family, so I'm not mad at that. Um... So Dante made a decision to, um, I guess, join the operation, and he wanted to know more about the operation in Port Charles. Um, I guess he's willing to do it. Um, I want to know what this operation is about, like because he did say it's somebody close to Dante. So if it's not Sonny, because obviously that's the first thing Dante was thinking about, that the case involves Sonny. I think it might. It could, but then again, it could involve Lulu and Dustin. Who knows who it could involve? It could involve Cyrus, maybe. You know, who knows? I wouldn't have thought that Cyrus Renault would be on the WSB's radar, honestly. I thought he would be more for the FBI or the DEA. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. But um, I'm interested in finding out what this new operation is. Like, what it, you know, what it is. Like, I want to know. Um, but anyway, this was a pretty uh, solid episode. Um, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about it. I will see you all later. Hope you all have a good night. Peace.